Hi, I am Super Manny. I am one of the community persons here in uh, at Puzzle. And we have six fabulous ambassadors who are going to share hot tips and tricks. And honey, it's going to be on fire. It's going to be fast. They have five minutes. Okay. Uh, session will be recorded, like I said, so you can slow them down. <laughs> and then go back and watch it a little bit. You'll get an email uh, after the session, you know, telling you like, thank you for for being here, or whatever, whatever, and then the link will be there. At the end of this event, you'll get a PDF with all of the links, okay? So just pay attention. Are we ready? <laughs> Remy is like, am I ready? <laughs> all righty, I'm gonna do my reading. Uh, Remy has been teaching, coaching, competitive speech and debate, and as well as virtually every social studies course in 2007. Aye, aye, aye. For the past two or three years, he has quickly pivoted towards a focus on increasing student voice and choice through game-based learning and active learning and play. So here is Mr. Remy. That's when you unmute and you share. I know. I was trying to figure out where my mouse was going between <laughs> two computers. For being an ambassador for some ed tech, I am technologically illiterate sometimes. All right. I'm going to share my screen really fast. And Manny's going to cut me off at five minutes because, uh, you know, I'm going to filibuster. Uh, so I teach a bunch of non-traditional classes, right, that you know, aside from my social studies classes, speech, debate, forensics, acting, all of these different things, right, might not have the same methods of delivering content. So in a quest to kind of show how I use um, Edpuzzle, I use it, you know, in the same way to assess people to gamify things. But in terms of creating more personalized lessons for students, I have started using Edpuzzle as a mechanism for information sharing at the beginning of every single unit. Uh, so there's me, uh, the, the AI generated. Uh, so I teach a bunch of stuff uh, at the end. Um, we all know that asking questions and building relationships are super important with our students. I struggle with, you know, taking the time to build relationships because I do not teach a single full year class that everything for me is semester. So I'm getting you know, 150 different students each semester. So the sooner I can start asking them reflective questions about themselves, the how they like to learn, how they like to engage with content, the better. I also know that some content or levels of interest or methods of engagement will change from time to time or from topic to topic. So what I'm going to share with you is the types of questions I ask that instead of embedding some kind of question that is based for assessment uh, or you know whether or not it's correct or incorrect from engaging with a video. I will show you how I introduce content to the students and then ask them uh, some questions throughout. So I tend to ask six different things depending on the type of content that they're getting. Uh, so the first thing that I will ask after you know we're maybe two minutes into a five to seven minute video is, what from this topic seems interesting to you? So if we're talking about supply and demand and economics, if we're talking about building a character or writing a thesis statement for a speech, what are some things that resonate with you? What are some things that you are already excited about? What's some prior knowledge you might already have? And then more importantly, what's the stuff that sucks, right? What is the vegetables that you will have to eat? What is the medicine that I will have to get you to take? What are the things that you already know this is not going to be your jam so I can you know, sprinkle some berry dust on it and make it better. Three, in looking at what we are getting from this content already or from this introductory video, do you think you want to do something hands-on, something by yourself, something in groups, et cetera, et cetera? And this allows the students to kind of identify their preferred modality so I can make sure later in the unit I am kind of pushing all of the right buttons or offering the right kind of choice-based options to my students for whatever the assignment is that they may be engaging in. Um, I'll ask a prior knowledge question, right? So in the same way that we offer pre-assessments, I don't want to have to teach a fourth year senior how to write a thesis statement who's been doing it with me for three years. So what is something that you already have? What's some experiential knowledge you have based on what we've seen? 
This allows me to identify people who might be able to lead groups, do some peer teaching or some co-teaching alongside me uh, with whatever content we're working with. These will change from time to time that sometimes they'll get more specific. Sometimes I'll ask them for ideas like when you've seen this video, what's something that you would like to do? What's something that you would like to explore? And I will embed these all as short answer questions throughout. And in the same way that you can analyze correct and incorrect data in the report that you get from your students, I will ask these questions and use it to inform or update the plans that I've got throughout the rest of the unit. One minute. Uh, uh oh, oh, I think I only have two slides left. Uh, so I will, as I've identified the students who give good feedback on whether or not they like assignments or they feel like uh, I'm trying to at least engage in the way that they want to learn or display their learning. Once we get into the second, third, fourth unit throughout the uh, year or the semester, they can help then give that feedback, give some questions that I can use in a future introductory lesson. Uh, and then the last thing is, right, this is how we foster a sense of belonging in our classes. This is how we amplify student voices and things like that. So instead of going, here's how I can check some boxes in a more traditional way, I figure since I teach weird classes, I would go, here's a weird way that I use Edpuzzle to do some sideways thinking to help us prepare, prepare for future lessons. And then I can dance for like the remaining 20 seconds or 10 seconds and... <laughs> Look at you! Perfect timing. Wow. <laughs> My anxiety is up. That's why I had to wear the themed shirt. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> okay. Well, next up we have Michelle. Michelle Manning. Michelle is an instructional technology integration specialist from Long Island, New York. I was going to say New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> no, New York, <laughs> with over 30 years in education. Take it away. Hi, everybody. Um, can you see my presentation? Are we all set? Okay, great. So in two easy steps, I'm going to show you how to turn your video, your Edpuzzle, into a riddle room. Edpuzzle is already awesome. I'm going to show you how to make it even more awesome. So if you want to follow me, here I am, Manning Tech Talk, on all the things. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. So to turn your Edpuzzle into a riddle room, start by adding a note to the beginning of the video. And in the note, ask your riddle. And then if you want, you can even attach a hyperlink that is a forced copy to a Google Doc where the students can keep track of the clues. So when I make these, I have the Google Doc with the riddle on top, and then I put a table with all of the numbers on it, and then they could just fill in the blanks as they're going through the Ed Puzzle. So now how do they solve the riddle? Good question. So using the answer feedback tool, you will add a clue to the riddle. So when the student is watching the video, they stop to answer a question. Using that immediate feedback, not only is that great for student progress and so that they can um, assess their learning, that's when they get the clue to the riddle. You could even differentiate it, make it a little harder by saying the third letter is T, or you could give the clues in order for the younger students. And on the video, you'll see that there is a bit.ly link. If you would like to download those images that I created, there is a puzzle piece for each letter of the alphabet. But instead of images, you could always just type the clue and let them know what the letter is. And like Manny said, you'll have a link to this presentation that will have everything there for you. So this is student view. When they answer the question, they get that immediate feedback and they can see what the next letter to the riddle is. So if you're interested in trying one, um, here is a riddle. I'm a seed with three letters in my name. If you take away the last two, I'd stay the same. What am I? So when Manny shares this presentation at the end of Rapid Fire, you could either click this link to be brought to Edpuzzle to watch a hysterical video on children bringing snacks to school, or you could use this QR code if you want to try the Edpuzzle that has been turned into a riddle room. So that's my presentation. I didn't even need the warning. I'm very proud of myself right now. And um, if you have any questions, throw them into the chat or reach out. Thanks so much. Wow. I mean, we can have Raven come back and do the dancing. <laughs> <laughs> if you know me, you need to be very impressed that I did that in under five minutes. I'm proud of myself. 
look at you, but people on the chat got the concept. I mean, it's it's great because you already know how to use that puzzle, right? Yeah, chat. It's just, and it's just the the put that on the feedback. That is that's yeah, great. and you don't even have to use the images. You could just type it. You could keep it sweet and simple. Two steps. The kids love it, and they keep asking for more riddles. Yeah. Oh, sure. I'll go back to the QR code. Let you me try the chat. Says on fire. Say yes. <laughs> There oh. you go. Sorry about that. I could throw the link in the chat too, but Miami's going to share everything and you'll get this presentation and you could just click to slide six and click the link or scan the QR code again. Yep. So at the end, I'll share that with you because you're staying at the end. Right, 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 right. I'll be here. All right. Uh, oh, I think we have <laughs> our... Uh, oh yeah, Michael's here. Ooh, okay, Michael, you're at the end. Okay, um, no okay, Stormy's next. Woohoo! I have Super Stormy. It's she is an educator and a lifelong learner, learner. My English is not working. With a passion for levering the power of technology to bring students across the globe together and share ideas and create innov innovative products that will ultimately lead to a solution to the global seven to the seventeen global sustainable goals. She has over 16 years of experience in elementary classrooms, and she's currently teaching third grade. Super story. Yes. Awesome. So just waiting for my turn to share my screen here. It says I cannot share while others are sharing. So hello, my friends, while we get this figured out. Yeah. Uh, Manny, I here we go. I'm ready. So I'm going to go ahead. My brain doesn't want to work right now, but it's all good. Okay. So. Can you see my screen? That's my favorite question because I never get to ask it anymore now that I'm not remote. So you can see my screen, yes? Awesome. So in case I forget to say everything I mean to tell you, it's okay, my friends, because like I do with my students, I've already recorded what I'm going to say in the resources you're going to get my weekly collection. So you're going to get this tip and many more. So on that note, let's hop on over here to the... Ed Puzzle. You should now be seeing my screen, the Ed Puzzle Library. Yes, because it does not tell me to change like it tells me in my other app. So thank you for that uh, confirmation. We're going to jump into getting it done. My uh, little clip is called Ed Puzzle Productions, and I'm actually creating a whole series on Ed Puzzle Productions that promote personalized learning. Um, that's a lot of P's, right? I'm a uh, third grade teacher. I teach alliteration. And so some of you might understand. So we're over here in Ed Puzzle. And what I want to do is create something, right? We know the most common way to create something is to come up here and type something. I love frogs, so we're going to look for a life cycle of a frog. And look at these amazing videos I just found. I'm sure they are perfect and exactly what I need. But probably not, because I'm not teaching them. I'm not saying I make great content. I'm not saying I'm even an influencer or YouTuber, as my kids call it. But I know my students need to learn from their teacher because their teacher knows them and knows where they need to grow from. And so we need to personalize instruction, not after I make the perfect video, but now. And so I'm going to show you how in Edpuzzle, it's not only possible, but it's easy. So... I'm going to click over here on this magic add content button and I can see all the amazing ways. I'm going to click on this one called record video. Maybe you don't even know this is there. Do you notice that this is exactly like everything else that we use? I personally use this app and this app and this app and oh, that one's cool too. And they have so many video editing features that I will never use them all. I don't need them all. And it takes me so much time. And I finally get that three minute perfect lesson, but it took me three hours to edit it because I wanted this and I wanted that. I don't need that my friends and nor do you. What we need is this Edpuzzle camera right here. I'm gonna share a tab. I could share a, a tab, my desktop or only the camera, but since I'm in Zoom, I can't share the camera. Uh, so I'm going to start recording. When I click start recording, it's going to allow me to record a tab. So what I'm going to do is open a tab. You can't see my tab. I'm getting a countdown on my end, three, two, one. And now you should see that I'm over here in the Edpuzzle recorder. I know that because I see this little, oh, I can't move my slides. This little 
toolbar in Edpuzzle. This toolbar is the tools within this Edpuzzle camera. Free 93, my friends, and fast. I'm going to prove it to you why you need to use this. My camera normally would be on here, but because I'm in Zoom, it's not showing me. If you watch that Flip video, Flip lets you use another camera at the same time, just saying um, Zoom. But so watch that Flip video and you'll see that I'm able to manipulate the camera. So, you know, they don't put Miss Daniels in the corner ever. I don't stay well in the corner. Um, and so I can use all these cool tools. Right now it's recording. I know it's recording because it says 50 seconds, 51 seconds of Edpuzzle. And so what I would do is come over here. I can remove this Chrome if I don't like this. I can just tell my students what I need them to know right now. Procedural. Okay, this is your research tracker. I need you to da-da-da-da-da-da-da. One right? minute. Of course, I'm not going to I'm not gonna talk like that. But in one minute, I can do this in one minute. Watch. I'm glad it came down to one minute because look how fast it is. I didn't go to YouTube. I'm going to upload this video. And then guess what, my friends? I'm ready to add my questions or my content or everything else I can add, right? Look, it's done in less than one minute, Manny. And so I can play this. I can do voiceover. I can do what I can do to any other video I found, but it's my video. And if I wasn't using my camera in Zoom, I would be using my camera in that video. So there it is, my friends, in under five minutes. Use the camera in Edpuzzle for Edpuzzle Productions. Thank you very much, Manny. <laughs> yes. Oh, my gosh. Look at you. Um, I mean, that's how fast it is. Oh, sorry. I did have a timer. <laughs> yeah, you made me jump. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll reset it whenever I have um, Alex. Because Alex is next. Oh, and gee, this is like... On fire for sure. Right. Stop sharing. I mean, oh, stop yeah. share. Okay. Stop okay. Go. okay. I stop sharing. Go ahead, Alex. Appreciate that. <laughs> Hi. So, Alex Isaacs is an educational technology coach in Long Island. No, Long Branch Public Schools. But you're in Long Island. No, you're not in Long Island. You're in New Jersey. You're good, Manny. Long Branch is me. All good. Ay, ay, ay. Nine years of full-time teaching experience in STEM, science, and math classrooms. His passion for making accessible and engaging materials for teachers and learners motivates him to retain up-to-date and the most cutting-edge forms of technology while creating engaging materials for others worldwide. Man. I've been recording in multiple languages and my brain is like, this is English. <laughs> Man, I thank you read. so much. I, I know Italian near, nearly did you in, but I, I'm very <laughs> appreciative of that intro and so appreciative of so many of my uh, PLN friends for attending this and being willing to try to find some new ways of using this platform. So five minute rapid fire here. I'm going to do my best. For those of you who might not know me, I'm Alex Isaacs. I'm an educational technology coach in Long Branch, New Jersey at Long Branch Public Schools. Those are all my different socials. And I would especially tell you to look at that Wakelet icon over there on the right, because if you are into technology, I have some great collections for you to take a look at. Now, for those of us who don't know, in addition to many other very worthy causes and messages for the month of May, it's also Mental Health Awareness Month. So when I was thinking about what I was going to present at this session, I figure, you know what, let me talk about something very near and dear to my heart. When I was a math teacher teaching eighth graders who were in severe times of need with all they were experiencing, and just really kind of sum up this slide. And it's not only going to, you know, focusing on that social emotional learning needs of our students, it's not only going to impact their learning in the form of feeling cared for, feeling heard, it's actually going to impact their scores as well and allow them in the future to be more uh, ready to interact with others in a harmonious workplace. So really great value in allowing this. And again, former middle school math teacher, if I could find time to add it in consistently, I know you can as well within your classes. These are just kind of my broad overall points as far as what I like to keep in mind. Always got to find relevant video content, making sure that you're adding in those interactive elements at critical points so that students aren't kind of just passively watching. I really like to make prompts that offer choice, something that Remy said earlier, that's something that's very important, giving kids those options. And then obviously kind of celebrating our students when they take that leap to share something that might not be academic going on in their lives that they want you to know about or an incident of triumph in their life. You got to give them that feedback and really celebrate that. And also, of course, being consistent with the opportunities. 
So this is a slide where I actually offered you different things that you can embed within your Ed Puzzle video lessons. You could see that in the middle column down at the bottom, I would highly recommend instituting that mood meter that you see there. That's going to allow especially younger learners to identify and regulate their emotions. But then we also provided just some helpful apps that would go all the way up to adults. And then also some breathing techniques that you can incorporate either as your video lesson or something that can be more of like a follow up for your students moving ahead. Now, one other thing that I could show you as I get to the end here is this is a Canvas slide deck and Edpuzzle embeds directly into this. So if you're not so concerned about getting results in that classroom setting on Edpuzzle, you can embed any Edpuzzle link into a Canva design and have it work fully within that. So this was a video that I did for my students when I felt we really needed a boost kind of midway through the school year during the hybrid and remote learning years. And it was when I really instituted a Mindful Monday program as part of my grade eight math class where it was SEL every time, check-ins, asking them how they were feeling, something that made them smile in the last week. Because not all my kids had some friend or even sometimes family member that they could rely upon. So it was always me trying to give them that outlet within a lesson to share something with me if it was going on in their life and impacting them. But what I just want to show you is very quickly, very proud I'll mute this. The book and not so the first thing that I always like to do, got to do a quick shout out to Stacy Roshan here attending. Always got to start off with setting the purpose of your video lesson. And my biggest tip here, add in that audio message to raise up that accessibility for your students, especially if we're dealing with our multilingual and neurodivergent learners. So I always like setting the scene with a nice audio message. And, not just and then some just other examples that I could share with you is, you know, I was asking them what their career or life goal is, because this video was all about kind of taking the lid off of your jar and accessing your full potential. I kind of wanted more for my students than I felt some of them wanted for themselves. And looking at a group of 13 and 14 year olds, that was breaking my heart. So what I was trying to do more than anything was give them opportunities to kind of see themselves in a more positive light, want more for their life, start looking ahead to know that the circumstances that they might have been under at this time wasn't forever. So I kind of gave them this opportunity to kind of talk about their life goals. Again, I'm always adding in those opportunities to answer with audio as well, can get those more authentic and accessible answers from our students. And then I'm also including some choice options, as I said before to you. That's very important as well, where we're giving students the option, if I don't like this prompt, I can follow up with this one as well. And then I always like kind of ending my lessons with something that's a little bit more uplifting, something actionable, something that's not gonna be so far down the road. What can you do today to achieve your goal or start fulfilling your full potential? And those are in very short amount of time, the things that really stand out to me, that things that I wanna share. And I even incorporated into this a little cross-curricular math question to keep my kids on their toes. So if me talking with my full New York accent even though Manny, I am from New Jersey now, was a <laughs> bit too much. I do have a Wakelet resource hub for you here. Manny, this will be released by him, shared at the end, so don't worry about that. And if at any time you want to reach out to me on Twitter X, that's where I'm most active. Would love to talk tech with you, especially Ed Puzzle and anything else on your mind. So please reach out to me at any time. And Manny, hope I met the mark with the amount of time and, and hope people can take at least one thing away from that little five-minute uh, rapid-fire session. Yeah, we took a little bit from Michelle, so, so, so that's a good thing. All right, all right. <laughs> thank you, Michelle. <laughs> all right, all righty. Uh, this is this is really fast paced. I love it. So, oh, look at you! They're already ready. Okay, <laughs> Danessa, Danessa Minji is the seventh and eighth grade English language arts and robotics teachers in Oakdale Junior High School. I was proud of myself. I know how to pronounce that. She's passionate about learning and technology and shares the love with students and fellow teachers. Then as I host the Masters of Science in Curriculum Instruction and Assessment, a smart, exemplary education educator, a Google champion, an Apple's ambassador, among others. Teaching is not her job, it's her passion. Oh. I love it. Um, get, getting better at it, and that's her job. That's so true. We, yeah, true. I'm a hot mess all here, the time. Right? So why everyone's here today. Thank you guys. Hi, I'm Danessa. So we're going to engage with Edpuzzle. All the tips and tricks today have been awesome. I've gotten a lot. So thank you all for sharing those. That's me. I've been teaching for tw almost 22 years. I love all the techies, the stuff, like everyone else, and just traveling and reading and 
all the things. So I wanted to start with my why. My why with Edpuzzle is because we're already fighting our students with their attention. They're already watching the videos, so why not engage them with, the, with videos? So um, I love Edpuzzle for all the reasons. I flip my class with them. You can do any vid video at any, um, for any, any video. We just saw Stormy um, bust out her video <laughs> as she was presenting. I mean, how easy is that? Um, and it integrates, as we know, with everything now. Thank you. I need to update my slide there. And of course, the grade book's really easy. But one of my favorite, favorite ways to engage are all those in addition to that. But I think one of the most um, underutilized uh, things in Edpuzzle is student projects. I don't think we talk about it enough. And um, when students get to make their and uh, show their learning through making their own Edpuzzle, it blows their mind. They're like, wait, 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 I can do it. And so it show with it integrates well with project-based learning, right? Giving them the opportunity to construct their solutions through their video, empowering them to either A, make their video, which they love to do do, um, or B, choose a video that I already have or that they find um, anywhere, um, and they get to make their video or choose their video. Um, I, my students are currently right now working, oh my gosh, my lights just went out. <laughs> Little drama there. Um, they're working on how-to videos. I'm super lazy at the beginning there. Lazy, no, smart, just kidding. Um, and my students currently are the experts in my classroom. So what better way to teach next year students by making them the how-to videos of my classroom? How to get their Chromebooks? Where do they sit? What happens if they lose, can't find their Chromebook? Um, how do you ask to use the restroom? How do they sign out to use the restroom? Where did, how to check out, you know, all the things, like every single thing, logging in, turning in homework, because I don't know why my seventh graders can't turn in homework in Google, uh, Google Classroom, guys. So I have these videos, the students are making their videos, and then they use, Ed, uh, they go into Edpuzzle. Did that show? Did it switch? So this is my video that I use, but then uh, recently they just got this one. So a student took, students took my video and they went through and created the questions to go with it. So this, right? Right now they're making their videos. This is, I was like, show me how to do this. So here my students added the note, hey, this is this video, how to use the bathroom pass, etc." So keep that in mind. And then it goes and they watch the video and then it gets to the next question. What, how should, how are they asking in this video? Later it says, how should they ask? Because if you're an English teacher and someone says, can I go to the bathroom? You say, ew, I don't know. Do you not know how? And then they freak out. But using the, having students, and this is just one option, obviously to use, um, videos at the beginning, but it's just such a great way for students to make their videos, edit their videos through Edpuzzle and adding those questions. And once they get used to adding the notes, adding the links, doing audio, they love it. And they love to show. And when you use that video, they get so excited. Oh my gosh, that's my video. Just know when you use it, you can't share it with other staff. You have to, it's locked because it's obviously student generated. Just be aware of that. Um, but it's awesome. And I suggest you try it today. And that's my super rapid fire. If you need ha want to uh, have any questions about that, please reach out. I'm uh, like everyone else here, a resource for life. Thank you. Take it away. Wow. That was, oh wait, I, oh, I, I did mute, unmute. <laughs> my brain, I'll tell you what. Ay, ay, ay. That's like, I'm learning. I love it because I always learn from, from, from teachers. I love it. <clears throat> okay. Last but not least, all the way to New Zealand. He's in the future. He's, it's already <laughs> Friday, midday over there. <laughs> we have my, uh, Dr. Michael. Okay, he says super. Dr. Michael Harvey from Marlboro Boys College in Blingham, New Zealand. I, I think I butchered that must be in Japanese. A pioneer in integrating education technology into teaching, Dr. Harvey has revolutionized classroom engagement and assessments through his innovative use of Edpuzzle, obviously. Uh, today, he'll share his expertise and insights guiding educators on how to harness the power of edtech to enrich students' learning experiences. Indeed, what a wonderful way to uh, spend my birthday uh, doing Edpuzzle presentations. Um, yeah, so I guess I'll just uh, share my screen. So where is it? Uh, that one. Oh, it's an edge. Oh, well, this is going to be fun. Can't seem to find it. Um, do you have a copy of the presentation you can run through? Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay, good, because, uh, yeah, it doesn't seem to be connecting my tab. Yay, That's technology. Okay, I'll have it, I'll share it, and um, as I'm doing this, it's happy birthday! Indeed. 
Now let me share my screen, share, and then you tell me when to move. Indeed. Okay. Awesome. So it should be working. Great. Is that? Uh, yes. It's got your website in front. So that is that working? So I can see my presentation at the background. Yeah. Do you, you, you all see the my screen, right? This is agenda. Uh, yeah. It's got your a website, the edpuzzle.com. Yeah. So I need the presentation. Oh, whoops. I... <laughs> Uh, building the planes that flies. Um, yeah, I got technical difficulties over here. Um, I found it actually, so I'll share maybe. There we go. Brilliant. So that should be now, once I start the slideshow, should be going. Slideshow. Present. Brilliant. Yeah, we see it. So, so slowly. Like, okay. Yeah. So finally getting there. Right. So diagnostic assessments with Ed Puzzle and a whole lot of gifts. Um, so yeah. So Dr. Michael Harvey, Marlborough Boys College in Blenheim, New Zealand, named after uh, the Lord Blenheim, who was involved in Trafalgar British history. So the agenda for this very quick five-minute round is Ed Puzzle, your new diagnostic superpower, bit of Ed Puzzle 101, don't be the ambulance at the bottom of the cliff, cooking up a diagnostic delight, and also unmasking student minds and going forth and diagnosing. Okay, so... Ed Puzzle is basically your new diagnostic superpower. I am a science teacher who loves Ed Puzzle as a learning tool. And today we're going to dive quickly in about four minutes, the magical world of Ed Puzzle, where quizzes meet cat videos. All right. So Ed Puzzle 101. So essentially what Ed Puzzle is, is an interactive video flat platform. A lot of my students uh, use video as a way to communicate and also consume and create information. So great features in Edpuzzle include video cropping, adding questions, tracking student progress in the background, and also uh, basically thinking of Edpuzzle as the love child of YouTube and a pop quiz. Okay, that's a bit freaky. But yeah, the key is don't be the ambulance at the bottom of the cliff. As a teacher, early assessment identifies what students know and don't know, so you can cater learning to the individual student using Edpuzzle. So remember in science class when you thought that photosynthesis was a fancy camera app? Yeah, we've all been there. So in terms of cooking up a diagnostic delight, essentially on the program, uh, on Edpuzzle, you select a video, you select edit, you crop the relevant part and select add cut, and then you add diagnostic questions. So there we go on the website. So select the video, boom, select edit, getting there okay yeah crop the relevant part that you want there we go using the the bar at the bottom and then add diagnostic questions as you go this is the next slide quite interactive with this okay adding questions so questions can essentially be open-ended multi-choice um the choice is quite um broad okay i've just chosen open-ended questions there as the example and then you basically give the students the question or the video before the lesson, and then you can basically assess um, what they do and don't know. And it's kind of using a flip learning model, so you can actually cater to the individual strengths and weaknesses of each individual student. Okay, the idea is you're unmasking student minds. Ed, <laughs> many quite enjoys the gift, I think. Uh, Ed Puzzle provides real-time data on student answers, so it turns out that 42% of students believe electrons are tiny disco balls. And also that 70% uh, of facts are made up on the spot. But you can use data for targeted student interventions, okay? Even before you start teaching face-to-face. -face. So go forth and diagnose. Ed Puzzle is a diagnostic superhero. May your assessments be accurate as a cat's pounce on a laser dot. And we got there in the end. Stop share. Yeah, I love the visuals. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I like gifts. I know the yes. disco ball or the of the or the cat little flash of laser time. That's that's so cool. Uh, I am going to put the link on the chat. So now everyone's going to be like. <laughs> so uh, you see, we got four minutes over. This is amazing. We made it. <laughs>